It's not much of a stretch to say that the 2015 adaptation of Project Ito's 2008 novel Harmony is in many ways poorly done. It's often overdramatic in what was more subtle within a novel, the overwhelming oppressive nature of the society it is depicting is mostly lost, and most scenes have this rushed feeling to them, as if the production doesn't have time to let things linger or play out in a more natural way and at a runtime of just under two hours, it's really not that surprising when you consider just how densely packed the novel it is adapting is. Despite these production problems, the underlying current and ideas contained within the novel are preserved. It is a faithful adaptation of Ito's novel. It doesn't change much in the presentation of the novum that is being discussed within the novel. It also acts as a good vehicle to discuss one of the most regarded Zero Nandai SF writers and perhaps one of the most important writers within the world of Japanese SF. Okay, so I may have thrown a lot out, out there with terms that people may or may not be familiar with. Making a statement like most regarded and most important are statements that need some sort of backing to be able to make them. Well, I will do my best to present some evidence to do, to do that, but the truth of the matter is, well, I can present information that points towards that being the case, I can't make any total proclamations on it due to there not being a lot of discussion surrounding Project Ito available in the English language. There are discussions of Project Ito written in Japanese, such as Iko Keikaku within Google Scholar brings a whole host of papers and articles about him, but very little of it is in fact translated. And this causes a problem that I am currently unequipped to solve, although I, I do know people who are able to read the Japanese language, who could potentially translate them, I lack the funds to actually pay them to do it, so unfortunately I am unable to use any of them. That being the case, what can be found about him places him in a prominent spot within the Zero Nendai SF writers, or people who were writing science fiction within the years 2000-2009. In a survey done by the Tokyo Songesha, a publishing house in Japan, of their top 100 SF stories of the Zero Nendai that was published in 2010, Project Ito was given three spots. And his book, Genocide of Organ and Harmony, received the first and fourth amongst the people who had read and written about his books. The books that were in between were Tolu Butaka's Marak Scramble and Nagaru Tanigawa's The Melancholy Power His Hisuzumiya. Other notable works on this list are Shinsekai Yori or From the New World by Yusuke Kishi, The Road by Carmers McCarthy, and The Pear-Shaped Man by George R. R. Martin. While it doesn't prove much in the way of saying that he was great or important, it does showcase that he was heavily discussed within the Japanese SF landscape and even being quoted within Gen Yurobuchi's Psychopath. One aspect that does in fact make him somewhat truly special is in how fast and how many of his works were translated into the English language. The book Harmony was translated and released in 2010, only two years after it was released in 2008 in, in Japan. His other books and a collection of short stories were released soon after concluding in 2012. The only other book that still hasn't been translated is Empire of Corpses, which was finished after his death by author T. Angel. Compare this to the third generation SF writer Ohara Mariko, someone who was writing in the 1980s, didn't get a complete translation of her book Hybrid Child until the year 2018, the year I took a Japanese science fiction class where I had the privilege of reading it only months after it had been translated and released. The biggest mark that Project Ito did leave when talking about Japanese SF is something that Professor Brian Posadas said somewhat offhandedly in class while we were discussing Project Ito. He told us that when we are looking at Japanese science fiction within the modern context, then we can think about it as a split being formed. There is a there is before Project Ito and after Project Ito. With the appearance of him as a writer, even though he was only active for a relatively short period of time, is something that is hard to quantify, and this essay unfortunately does not have the space required to go in depth into it. As an aside to the staying power of Project Ito, there is an article in, in the Springer Science and Ethics Journal that uses the world of harmony as a stepping stone to whether or not we should institute the world of health that is presented within the novel. The article was, was published in October of 2020.
I mentioned earlier that, that the Novum of Harmony remains the same from the book to the film, but I never explained what a Novum actually is, and so for those of you who haven't studied much of of SF that may have been a bit confusing. Within the context of SF, a novum in short is a scientific invention or idea that the story is worked around. It can also be called the what if that is in many ways essential to having a science fiction story. I would argue that you really can't have an SF story without the what if, but that is a discussion for another time. The novum that is explored and played out in harmony is nanotechnology, specifically in the application of it being used as a way to cure diseases. This is due to the world of the story. This, the world was rocked with nuclear war and due to the fallout, the cancer rates spiked and so did the mutation of other viruses. This led to the development of Watch Me, a nanomachine system that regulates the health, health of a society. And with, and with the fall of capitalist society into an, an administration system that governs the people, the central conflict and struggle that's present throughout the book and to a somewhat lesser extent in the film is how this technology affects people on a daily basis with how it is used to control every aspect of their lives. The Watchman system controls everything of your development, your height, your weight, your facial structure, your bone structure, and even your breast size. And to drive this home, it's really not a surprise that both the protagonist and the antagonist of the film are women. With the bodies of women being controlled throughout history through the limiting or banning of abortion, determining who they should marry, who they should sleep with, and sometimes even determining their value based solely on whether or not they can have the ability to have children. It is through these women that we experience the, the events of the film and it's through these women that the amount of control is demonstrated. Now, this amount of control also manifests in ways that are pretty graphic and it also it's also here that I will put a graphic content warning for those who do not wish to see the events that happen in this film or listen to discussion on these topics. Feel free to skip to this time code. I may not have one. Oh no. About 30 minutes into the film, this happens. Nearly 7,000 people all tried to kill themselves with nearly 3,000 of them succeeding in doing so. This event leads to the discovery that the watch me system is able to actively control the mind and make someone do something that they wouldn't don't want to do, such as committing suicide. But as the stories move for forward, more and more of the insidious nature of the system starts to get revealed. Remember the ETM ETML code that I put at the beginning of the video and before this section? The code before for this very section of the video is when it is ultimately revealed that Watch Me is even able to go as far as removing one's consciousness. It's called the Harmony Project. And it's here that we can finally ask the interesting question about Harmony in terms of its story and its larger impact on the SF dialogue in Japan. Why would you take controlling a population so far? The answer, it's in service of the, to the worldview and the grand narrative called lifeism. Lifeism is the reason why the na nanomachine technology contained within the story is so incredibly invasive. After the maelstrom, the people came to completely fear that the human race would die out due to the number of diseases and radiation that were rampant throughout the world. Through, through this, lifeism cropped up with its thought of being that life is the most important resource. This led them to develop Watch Me as a way to make sure that everyone remains healthy, and ultimately to the development of the harmony system that would remove all conflict together by removing people's consciousness. This type of process this type of thinking is possible because lifeism became the worldview, the grand narrative for which the world embraced after the maelstrom. Now, 
What's interesting about, about this setup is not really the grand narrative itself, but how it situates itself within the larger discussion of Japanese SF. If we think of Akira as a, the fragmentation of the grand narrative, Harmony is a return to that grand narrative. Alongside that is also a return to the de detective stories, which SF is in Japan was considered a variant of in the late 1920s and 30s, with most of its story playing out as a detective thriller in the hunt for the person or group that orchestrated the mass suicide and later on utter chaos when they declare that they will kill anyone who hasn't killed someone else. I would even go so far to say that some of the story structure is similar to that of Kobe Abe's Enter Ice Age 4, which was itself one of the critical moments in Japanese SF, according to Takeyuki Tatsumi. Harmony ultimately treats this return to the grand narrative as something extremely negative. With the Harmony Project built as an ultimate safeguard in case humanity returned to the destructive nature that caused the maelstrom, the antagonist of the story uses the chaos that they are inciting to force the hand of the administration to ultimately wipe out the consciousness of all the humans that have, that have watched me installed inside of them. And according to the story, it's an, it's an apocalypse where you experience complete and utter bliss, completely unaware of everything around you but still acting as, as if you have a consciousness. By destroying the self and removing everything that you can cause conflict, you can keep humanity alive. That is the ultimate end of the narrative.